So hello again. Uh, this is our first lab in NetCentric. Um, uh, we, we were handed, we were basically given most of the code by the book's author, which said to implement uh, a couple things. Um, this is basically what it does, right here. Code code below emulates a layer three, and below network environment emulates the transmission and delivery, possibly with bit level corruption and packet loss of packets across the layer three to four interface. Handles the starting slash stopping of a timer and generates timer interrupts. Generates message message to be sent passed from layer five to four. Uh, so yeah, I'm still trying to understand this code. I'm just trying to get this video done because we got a big storm coming and I'm not sure when or if we're going to lose power. And if we lose power, I'm not going to have a computer or most likely the internet. So uh, we're just going to, I find the best way to try to understand code is to uh, walk through it, step right through it. It's the way I like to do it. Maybe other people like to do it a different way, but so we'll just walk through it a little bit. I won't walk through the whole thing, and then I'll uh, just show some examples of it running and try to explain uh, things that I understand, uh, and hopefully you can understand. Uh, so let's get started. Hit F10. So we're in the main uh, function. That's where we start, and all the struct structures are uh, defined up here and so then we go back let's go back to the main so we'll start walking through it so we're going to enter initialize i in it whatever you want to call it so we're going to step into that initializes all that variables for this uh, function just going to print that to the screen, print that, then it's going to ask us for input, and we're just going to do, just do one for now. And we're going to keep going, it's going to ask us for probability, or yep, lost probability, a packet, so we're going to put 0 0.1, we're going to keep going. Now it's going to ask us for packet corruption probability, which will do 0 0.5. Then we're going to average time, which we've been using 50 seconds in uh, class. So that's what we'll use here. And then we're going to enter trace. We'll do 2. So then, yeah, we keep going here. And then this for loop will go for a thousand times, which what happens is we're going to do sum. Sum is zero right now. Sum plus Jim Rand. And we're going to enter Jim Rand just to show you what that function is. It's basically just generating a random number. Uh, so it declares that, generates it. Then it's going to return it. It's going to set it to sum, but it's going to do it a thousand times. So <laughs> we're not going to sit here because I can just hold it down, but that'll take forever to see. We're only at, well, it's right down here, uh, 25. So we're going to just hit F5 to continue to my next debug point. Uh, break, break point, sorry. <clears throat> so then if uh, the average is uh, less than uh, 0.25 or greater than 0.75, it's going to enter this if statement. But uh, as you can see down here, right here, it's not so we're going to skip over we should skip over it which it does so it's going to set these variables then go to ne generate next arrival time which we're going to enter so this is another function generates the next arrival uh, basically uh, right here the next set of routines handled the event list so it's going to set everything up trace is uh greater than 2 so we should enter that nope it's not greater than 2 and then this is going to generate get another uh, random number multiply by 2 then by lambda lambda which is 50 which is our uh, time between messages Then we're going to keep going. Uh, 
that is a constant right there. Then it enters here. A is, let's see if we can, uh, we can do add to watch. So we're going to keep going. We're going to insert event, enter that, which is this function down here. It's a lot going on. Um, so trace is greater than two. Not greater than two, I mean. So we're going to not enter that. Q is equal to, so we're going to enter here. Go back to uh, initialize. We're going to return. We're going to go to here. We go to here. Initialize. We set the base to one. Next sequence number to one, and so on. Basically, it's just going to keep going. I and I really can't <laughs> take me forever to walk through this whole uh, code. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll post what we uh, have on my WordPress blog. So if you guys want to take time to go through it and try to understand what's going on, uh, feel free to. Uh, so let me just get rid of these. Uh, let me stop my program. Get rid of these breakpoints so I can uh, run it. But I just put those in because some of the four, I didn't want to have to keep hitting F10 and, until the uh, for loop was done. So I put those breakpoints in where I wanted to stop next. And I think this is the last one. Just, yep. So we're just going to run it a couple times with different uh, numbers to see what happens. So we're going to go to debug, start without debugging. We're going to simulate, uh, we'll do 3, uh, 0 0.02, 0 0.05, 50, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, it's a lot going on. So, all right. So event time is right here. Entity entity zero. So we did get an ACK. So it was received. Then we uh, so here's our second. packet and we did not or we did receive an act but packet is being corrupted it says so then we get a bad we also get a bad check sum and then we also see right here we also get another packet being corrupted, didn't receive an ACK. This received an ACK. This is packet corrupted. There's a lot going on. Maybe I should just do smaller numbers. There's so much going on. Uh, so let me run it again. So we'll do 2, 0 0.1, 0.3. 50. There we go. Alright, so that's much shorter. <laughs> Hopefully I can try to explain some of this. And if not, you guys can look over this video or pause it and just look over the things that it's uh, printing out. So maybe you guys can get a better understanding of it. So, yep. So the event time here is that. It's from layer 5. Uh, generate next arrival, creating new arrival. Insert event time is since that time. Invent, insert event future time will be 80.38. <coughs> so the main loop data given to student. That, yep. Two layer sequence number one, act zero, check. Scheduling arrival. Arrival on other side. Yep, yep. 
So we received it. Everything's all set and then stop the timer. <clears throat> then here's another. Then we receive and it finished basically. There was really no error or packet loss or or packet corruption that I can see from here. It looks like everything went smoothly. Because we got axe back. Um but yeah, we <laughs> this is I don't know, I found this assignment really hard to uh understand. Uh it's still taking me time to go through it and actually figure out what's going on. Uh even trying to walk through the code it's kind of confusing. Well not confusing, but just so much going on it takes a while to walk through it. And uh basically understand what's going on. But let me run another simulation and see what happens. Uh, we can do one with 5 and then point 0.5, point, point 0.7, 50. I'm going to trace 4. I don't know what's going to happen with this one. And yeah, there's a good amount going on. So, packet, it says package being corrupted. Then down here, <clears throat> bad checksum, so packet being lost, packet being lost, packet being lost, packet being lost. So, it, yeah, this one doesn't look too uh, good under the numbers that I plugged in for everything. So, yeah, there's a ton of stuff going on. So let's just do another one with different numbers. So we're going to do 2, 8, 1, 1, we'll do uh, 25, we'll do 4. So this one does have a lot too. Um, <clears throat> this basically explains everything, but just really confusing. So yeah, this one looks that one's not so we yeah, that one finished. And then let's see if we have any That one looks good. Oh, we got a packet being lost finally here. Definitely less packets being lost in this one. It looks it looks like, from what I can tell, oh, packet being corrupted right there. Yeah, that one looks looked pretty good actually. But you can keep playing around with it. When you run this code and uh, try different things, see what have, see what see what goes on. Try to understand what's going on. It's basically what I'm still trying to do. I'm still struggling with it, but uh, as you can see, the program builds and runs from what we've added in class, and everything is updated to what we've done in class. So, um, so yeah, that's basically it. Hope you guys just well. We'll try to understand it. I'm still trying to. Just got to work at it. Take some time. Uh, walk through it, and eventually, I'll get it, and you'll get it. So, um, if you guys have any questions or comments, just feel free to leave them. Leave them. Thanks for listening, though. And uh, see you next video.